equilateral prism is telling so this will be 60 degrees This length of tomorrow. You, you read the question, I'll set the diagram. <clears throat> this point for it to be in contact, it has to cover a distance. And this one I'm, I'm taking this one here. So like this particular point, let me assume a point P on a prism. Okay, this is what I just actually read here. the triangle will be it should come like this no this cannot be 60 anybody angle this one I'll, I'll, I'll set it 30 degrees it will be yeah <clears throat> It will be 30 degrees. So what is X naught? X naught is the displacement of prism. So cos, cos 30 will be D by X naught. We will discuss numericals on prism. Somebody is asking so today. Uh, well, sorry, we'll discuss numericals on SHN. I just picked up questions on SHN. So therefore this uh, D will be Okay, for the prism to come in contact with the spring, it has to cover a distance how much X naught. It has to move a distance x naught here. Then, uh, what is the time needed to cover a distance x naught with a speed v? So let me call that as time. T one will call it. So T one will be d by v. So what is this time taken by prism? time taken by the prism to to strike the spring okay there's a one first part <coughs> sorry yeah x not by v yeah okay, okay. X naught will be okay. Yeah, yeah, I made correction. Uh, the prism has to cover a distance. Uh, there's a distance moved by the prism. I, I put it this one. Okay, now so when it moves a distance x naught, then what happens? It will go and strike the spring. So now what happened to the prism? So as it moves horizontally, it's going to compress the spring. So when it again, we'll go for this one here. How much spring will be, spring will be compressed by Let me take R. What is R? R is the compression. 
compression of spring when prism moves by a distance x okay get, getting the idea now r is a compression okay now now again cos 30 r by x uh, i am interested in the compression of the spring so x should be equal to we needed r no A T one is the time taken by the prism to go and strike the spring. It will take time T one. It will go compress. Okay, again, again, again. It will be. L -l Later, will we have to calculate the total time period. Later, I'll bring that one. T one is only time taken to move from. Okay, we'll do one thing. We will give the names like this. Huh? Okay, at least now okay. I can't draw so many diagrams. I'm trying to explain everything in the given question only. Time taken by the prism to move from A to B. What is uh, now? We'll calculate the T B C. Now here, what happen? Uh, it it will not move with the uniform speed. The spring force will come into picture. So how much of spring force will be K R? Component of that has to be taken. Spring force, how it will act? It will act in this direction. So on the prism, what is the spring force that will be acting? K R cos T. There is a restoring force. So now spring force. In horizontal direction, write that one. So that will be K R cos thirty. What is R? X cos thirty. This is the force acting on the prism. Along x-axis, that one. That is a restoring force. That this is like a restoring force, no? This will be. Okay, I think I'll, I'll give you at least one small diagram so that will be easy for you. Okay, our component of that is what what we call f x here. <coughs> okay, let me. Proceed further. Now it will undergo retardation. No. So what is that retardation? Minus f x by m. Uh, we should be equal to. So from this, we'll get the one fourth of the time period will be. Half of the time period. Let me call this T two. Okay, no problem. I'll write it. Omega will be. No. What is the time taken to move from B to C back to B? Because it will be oscillating. No. So that should be the one fourth of the time period. Uh, so like half of the time period. So two pi.
time taken by the prism to move from B to C and back to B. Okay, what is the total time period? What is the total time taken? Rather than this one, let me write T naught. What should be the T naught? Shall I say four times of TAB? plus two times of TBC. So I'll, I'll put it uh, on this side also. We can assume like this. Don't, don't go for maximum diagrams. Huh? It, it will kill your time. You know, better try to analyze through the, in the, in the question only. No, no, you try to see that. Time taken by the prism to move from A to B should be equal to B to A. Similarly on this side, so is it okay four times? Then time taken to move from B to C should be equal to C to B. On, on left side and also B to C, C to B. Is it writing? Or, or you, you just, if you want, you write only B, C, then you should write one by four. I think this will be justified. And then this will be a better one. So that confusion will not come. No, you write four times. Why four times? Because in one oscillation, A to B, B to C, C to B, B to A, then again, A to B, B to C, C to B, B to A. Substitute all this one. <coughs> one by four, no. See, like when the prism moves from B to C, again, it will take same time to move from C to B. It will lose contact from the spring. Again, again, when the prism moving towards left, it will move from B to C here. It will take some time, same time, T, B, C. Again, from C to B, same time. <clears throat> Please try to understand uh, the, this one. Because uh, then mathematics know, try to understand here. The path, uniform velocity motion, SHM, SHM, uniform velocity motion. Then again, uniform velocity motion, SHM, SHM, uniform velocity motion. This will be your answer. <clears throat> so when spring force is not acting along the displacement of particle, try to <coughs> try to analyze uh, what situation can arise. A to B uniform velocity motion I think uh, mains not possible in advance and there can be questions of these kind also you have to be alert <laughs> <laughs> 